once the pandemic hit, the law school admission council, LSAC, they switched the exam to be online and they went to a three section format. They also changed the name temporarily to be the LSAT flex, indicating what? Flexibility, maybe that it wasn't the regular LSAT, maybe it wasn't the long-term plan. And so as the pandemic kind of comes to a close, we hope, they are shifting the format once again to be four sections. So they're adding back in an experimental section starting with the August 2021 LSAT. The reason they're doing that is because they want to test out new LSAT questions for future test forms. Nobody wants to do an experimental section. It does cause anxiety and it is an, an unwelcome change. So basically, I think the anxiety comes from the fact that you're doing a longer exam. The LSAT flex was seemingly easier and it actually was easier for a lot of folks because it's a shorter exam. Endurance is not as much of an issue. When you add in an extra section, you now have a longer test sitting. And you also have the uncertainty around not knowing what the content of that extra section is going to be. So are you doing a second section of logic games, a second section of logical reasoning, or a second section of reading comprehension? And what's the placement of that section in the four sections total? It could be first, second, third, or fourth. And while you're doing it, you don't know whether it counts. So it's the feeling of not knowing which one it is while you're doing it. If you screwed up on something, is it the one that counted or the one that didn't matter? Obviously, you hope it's the one that didn't matter, but you're never really going to know. And once you get your score back, you can kind of guess at it, of course. And you could, of course, talk online with others on forums and such after the fact. A certain amount of that is allowed if you keep it vague and general in nature. But yeah, you don't know which one it is during, and that causes problems. You don't know whether to cancel your score or keep it. Factors like that. Of course, how can you not try to guess at it? It's what you're thinking about, obviously. So it's, it's like, don't think of an elephant. Of course, you're going to think of an elephant. You're going to, of course, try to figure it out during, which I don't recommend. You're going to try and figure it out after, which is fine. Although I recommend generally staying off of the forms because they only feed the anxiety. But it's not obviously harder. It's not obviously different. They're not testing out some radically new question type. They are trying to calibrate the difficulty of sections as a whole, largely, for future test administrations when what is currently an experimental section will become one of the scored sections on a future exam. But these are very subtle differences in difficulty. It's not like you're going to have four super tough logic games on the experimental and then four average difficulty ones on the actual. It's not like that. And they're not different question types either. It's just basically maybe on a scored section, you have one easy, two moderate, one difficult, because there are four logic games total in the section. And then on the experimental section, maybe it's it's like two easy, one moderate, one difficult. But where do you draw the line between easy and moderate? These are all shades of gray. You need to give your full effort on every section as if it was scored. Everything stays the same. So you're still doing one scored section of logic games, one scored of logical reasoning, one scored of reading comprehension. The sec What happens within a section is exactly the same, whether it's the LSAT flex, the new four section LSAT, as well as all prior LSATs all the way back to 1991. None of that changes. All that is different now is that they are adding back in the experimental section. So you're doing an additional fourth section that could be any of those three types, games, reasoning, or reading comprehension. But what happens within that extra section is also going to appear identical to all other LSAT sections back to 1991. The only change that's, that's happened that's really significant is back in June 2007, when they added in a dual comparative reading comp passage. I should just mention that to be comprehensive in what I'm saying here, but that's not related to this format change. We got four 35-minute sections for the new four-section LSAT plus a 10-minute break. So that yeah, that, that works out to about two, two hours, 35 minutes. And it actually used to be five sections before the pandemic, before the flex as well. So it was actually ended up being including like bubbling in your name back on the paper LSAT, it was probably like three and a half hours total. Both the three section flex and the new four section online LSAT, they're online. You can take it at home or if, you do, if your at home environment isn't suitable, you can take it at a hotel or Airbnb. Uh, LSAT will reimburse you up to $125. And so you're not going to a test center with a bunch of other people. There's not that commuting time. There's not the stress and anxiety of having other test takers around, the proctors walking around. You're not taking all that time to bubble in your name on a scan or anything like that. 
we're past all of that. So test day is actually a lot shorter. And you can, if your home environment is suitable, you can do all your practice tests at the same desk on the same device that you'll do the actual thing. If there were a lot of issues with the online proctoring in the earlier administrations of the exam moving online back in May and June 2020, they've largely worked out a lot of that since, fortunately, and what they've worked out will presumably continue as we go into the four-section version. Of course, there will always be tech issues for some percentage of folks. There are things, however, you can do to minimize the likelihood of that happening. One is to check all the ProctorU requirements. The LSAT online is administered by ProctorU, which also administers several other exams online, like the GMAT and the GRE. So go on their site before test day, check all the tech specifications, make sure that, that you're using an appropriate device. And ideally, you do that far in advance. You can get used to it for your practice tests as well, using that same device. There's also on ProctorU, there's a, a tested out simulation where you can check if your device and its updates and such are, with software are suitable for their system. It's test-it-out, so test it out .proctoru.com. And you can actually walk through it either automated, or if you scroll down, there's also a support rep you can connect with live. You want to take every practice test like it's game day, and you want to take those with the gravity that you'll take the actual thing, knowing that, hey, this matters. I don't want to ramp up the anxiety for folks or anything, but I also think you got to know that the LSAT is the number one factor in the law school admission process. And so if it requires like watching Legally Blonde or something like that, or putting up a picture of your dream law school to motivate you throughout your studying process, that can help. And look at that before you take every practice test and look at it before the actual thing to know like, hey, this is, this is real, this matters. I think on, on test day itself, folks will typically feel that, but it's also worth making sure that you take every practice test as if it were the actual. And the benefit is that while it can ramp up the seriousness of your practice tests, it can then relatively diminish the negative stress you might feel on test day itself so that it feels like just another run through. I think a lot about acute stress versus chronic stress when we're talking about things like adrenaline taking the test and such. I mean, chronic stress while you're studying for the LSAT for three to six months or longer, obviously that's not going to serve you to be in a constant state of worry that entire period. But alternative, and that's where things like mindfulness meditation can help, which I also highly recommend. But acute stress in terms of like, okay, well, maybe once a week or twice a week at most, I'm taking a practice test. That's stressful because I place importance on the practice test score. And on the one hand, you don't want to place too much importance on those scores because it's not the real thing and you don't want to be stressed out needlessly. But the benefit is that you get used to that feeling of the, the heart lifting and racing and knowing that, hey, what's going to happen and dealing with that for two plus hours, you're going to have that on game day also better get used to it and know how to bring yourself back down. And that's where mindfulness can help not only before the exam to center yourself, but then going in, if you get bogged down on a question, you panic as a result, knowing how to snap yourself back out of that. You've got your three scored sections, again, one of games, one of reasoning, one of reading comp, and then you have the fourth that could be anything. So first off is, okay, you say, well, the experimental section could be first, second, third, or fourth mixed in with the others. It could also be any of the types. And so you've got four different potential placements. You've also got four, three different types. So you're dealing with what, roughly like 12 different potential permutations. Plus you got to consider that games, reasoning, reading comp can appear in any order. So I'm not a combinatorics expert or anything, but there's a lot of different combinations you could end up with, right? So you can deliberately try to get every single combination in your practice tests, I recommend taking at least 10 practice tests. And I just talked about more combinations than that. So it's not like you have to do every single iteration or variation there, but I would say just randomize it, randomize it. And LSAC's Law Hub, which is the best place to do practice tests since they look exactly like the Proctor U system on test day, pra take your practice tests in there. But the problem is that they only present it in the order with games being first, logical reasoning being second and third, and then reading comp being fourth. So you need to do them in out of order, which I recommend doing using self-paced mode. Everyone says, I, I don't want to get two sections of games, or I don't want to get two sections of reading comprehension. It's like, well, if you don't want to do that, that means you need to do it that much more so that if it did happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Hey, if you love logic games, doing two of them is no big deal. That wouldn't stress you out as much. And so your practice test scores could be inflated as a result. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. 
I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.